Hi guys, this is the second part of the Asteroids tutorial for FXGL11 and in the first part this is how far we've got. So we um, have a player, we have some asteroids and we can shoot as well. Now the top two results in the previous poll were sprite shoot animations and gameplay logic. So that's the two, the two things we're going to focus on today. In terms of sprite sheet animations, uh, suppose we have something like this, which is an explosion animation. And that's what I'm going to use to create an explosion. Your sprite sheets should go to the same directory as just normal um, textures, so under textures. In order to create um, an animation from a sprite sheet, there are two ways you can do that. One is for cases where the sprite sheet is not um, nicely formatted, so where you have multiple rows or you have different um, sizes of frames. Here I've got just one row and each frame is exactly the same in terms of the size. So that's what I'm going to use and go to Entity Factory. Let's copy that for example. So as you have guessed, an explosion is going to be an entity. I'm going to call this explosion. Don't need the type, because um, we're not going to use it for collisions or anything. We will need a, um, a view. No, we don't need bounding box, just view. Texture, um, explosion, PNG. And you can then call to animate texture. If, um, well, the frames are in one row, so I can just say number of frames here and the duration I want the animation to be. Number of frames, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we've got 16 frames. The duration I want is something like um, 0 0.66 of a second, I think. I don't want it to be full second. And then once you've done that, it will give you back an animation texture. And don't forget to then either loop or play. Because the texture that's given back, it doesn't do anything by default. So you have to either make it play once or loop the animation. Let's try this. So <clears throat> uh, this is the code that handles collisions between bullets and asteroids. I'm not going to talk about the stuff that we already covered in the previous tutorial. So I'll just skip right to the um, spawning of our explosion. Where the asteroid was. Mm, yeah, position. Let's try this. Right. You can see that there is a purple black texture and in the um, terminal you can see that the FXGL failed to load the explosion texture, which sometimes happens in the IDE when you've just added a new thing. So right click on the assets directory and click rebuild. I still haven't figured out why that happens. I'm assuming the IDE simply hasn't picked up the new stuff. Should be fine now. Yeah, there you go. We have an explosion. You will notice that after the explosion, the traces of it are still there. That's because it's stuck on the last frame, which is the um, 
normal behavior when you play the animation. So what you need to do is get rid of the entity once the animation is done. We can do that by adding new expire clean component with duration of uh, let's do the same duration and see what happens. Yep, no traces now. So the explosion plays as soon as the explosion is finished. Uh, FXGL simply removes the entity from the game world and therefore removes it from the game scene graph, which in turn removes it from the screen. I think the explosion should be slightly offset to left and then up. I'm assuming because the explosion is centered rather than so it goes from here top left. And I'm assuming also that each frame is 128 by 128. Right? Let's try that. 2048 divided by 16. Yep. Uh, okay, so we need to figure out the center of um, the asteroid and then spawn it um, with 64 as offset because 64 is how um, big the center of each frame is 64 and that should give us the right offset top left is asteroid get center subtract 64 by 64 and then use that as the explosion um, spawning point Yeah, it's now centered nicely on the asteroid. Nice. Let's rename it to something like um, explosion spawn point. There we go. Right, so that's done. Um, if your animation looks something well if it's not nicely formatted and has frames of different sizes then you will need to use something a bit more complex which is animated um, texture new animated texture and then you will need to pass the channel channel new animated channel which takes something, I don't remember what it takes. Takes the image, which you can easily obtain from a fixed GL. Um, duration is how long the animation is. And that int, what's that int? Number of frames. Uh, I'm assuming that's the total number of frames you have in the animation. And then, you will need to provide frame data, which is list of frame, frame data. So animation, channel data. Which takes frame start, frame end, um, frame width and frame height. So on a frame by frame basis, you can edit um, 
your animation channel data in case your animations are not nicely formatted. Okay, that's enough about animations. So we've covered the simple way and the kind of complex way in case you need the complex way. And also if you need it to loop, just replace play with loop. That's for those animations that do not stop. So we've done that. The second most voted uh, result from the poll was gameplay logic. For gameplay logic, we're going to add some kind of scoring mechanism. So let's try this. Uh, we'll need some kind of a global variable, uh, which we have in init game bars. So these initialized game variables that are accessible from anywhere in your code, which makes them really useful for things like um, score or player health, for example. But um, score zero. So we can use the that to refer to score, right? And score is increased when we destroy our asteroids. And we increase our score by adding score plus 100. Finally, we need some way of tracking said score. I think we can do that by adding var text. So if we add this and then refer to the score as the name of the variable, which is basically its identifier. Let's try that. Yeah, so we have a text in the user interface, which tells us the score when we destroy something it gets increased by 100. Cool. That is actually turning out to be somewhat playable game. Oh yeah, I still haven't fixed the, the spawning of bullets because they're still offset by value. I left this as an exercise for um, viewers in the last video. Yeah, let's fix that and we'll call it a video. So where do we spawn the bullets? Um, there it is. The spawn data center get x center. Um, yeah, we need to um, subtract the um, half height and half width from the bullet size which is 37 by 13. I'm sure how it's going to work though, because if we do this, uh, will that give us what we need? Yeah. It's really cool when maths works just immediately. Sometimes it's not as nice and you have to kind of figure out why it doesn't work. Um, most of the time it's related to the y-axis being flipped because typically in Cartesian coordinates you have y-axis going, um, the positive y-axis going up. Uh, in most 2D frameworks you have y um, positive going down. And in Unreal Engine that's even weirder because you have, well you have something that is not the usual way to describe x, y, z coordinates. I think the z axis is up or something. And then um, the other one, the other ones are also kind of weird. Right, so we have a, we have covered today a sprite sheet animation. We also covered a bit of gameplay logic, which, which is basically was adding a score. Um, and we also um, fixed the bullet coordinates 
course wanting. Let me know if you would like me to continue working on this demo uh, and we might make it even more interesting by adding some other things. Um, I'll create a new poll for you if you would like to vote on some uh, other aspects of FXGL 11 that I could cover. And that would make a nice reference tutorial, I think. All right, thanks for watching.